<clears throat> so welcome everyone to our uh, June all members meeting. Um, this is kind of a big one of big meeting. This is, you know, we have now about quarterly meetings with all our members. Uh, but this is the one where we uh, have received feedback from many of you on um, how things worked out for you last year and um, also um, what you would like to see in terms of activities and programming for next year. Um, so this, so we're so glad that you were able to attend in person or if not, to listen uh, to this later. And we've got a lot of great information. Um, so this is kind of our agenda. I think Liz sent this out uh, when she uh, sent the registration, but you um, get to meet our new executive council. Um, so we have some new folks who have joined us and we're really excited about that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the annual survey results. We just kind of closed out on that. So we're still digesting it, but thank you for all that great um, information and we're going to talk a little bit about upcoming events um, and then uh, we're going to hear a little bit about what's happening with the parent organization open the open ed consortium which is always exciting and um, lots of great stuff happening worldwide all right I do want to welcome our new members that came in and in spring um, I think we, we got an opportunity at our March meeting, at our March quarterly, to welcome uh, the folks from um, Northern West Virginia College, um, from Colorado, from Johnson County, and from Santa Ana College. So welcome again. Um, you're part of our spring uh, flight. But um, in the last couple of months, we got four brand new members. Um, and one is Reedley College. Amanda Tainter is the representative there. She's the faculty coordinator for instructional design and distance education and also the student learning outcomes. And she's been leading um, several really exciting OER projects. Amanda, are you online with us today? I think she had a meeting today around early childhood education, which she and um, Jennifer Paris from College of the Canyons in California have been leading a national effort on building OER for the entire early childhood education um, associates. So sorry she couldn't join us. And um, next up is Christina Trunnell. She's the Trails OER coordinator and Trails is the library system there in Montana for higher ed. Um, Christina, are you on, on today? Doesn't look like Christina's on today, but we're really excited to have Montana join us, and um, we hope to have more to share about what Christina's doing in the future. Um, next up is uh, the Virtual College of Texas, which uh, we had Judith Sebesta here, the executive director, and they're really um, getting going on OER and have some exciting events coming up. Judith, would you like to say hello? Sure. Howdy. Howdy, everybody. Thank you so much, Una. We're so happy to be a part of, of the consortium. Wonderful. And uh, hopefully next year we'll hear more about the great stuff you're doing. So um, we'll stay tuned for that. And um, the last new member I have to introduce today is um, Grossmont College, which is in San Diego, eastern San Diego County. And Dave Dillon is the, he's a professor of counseling there. He's been leading um, an OER internship program and all sorts of OER events on his campus. He's also the author of an award-winning textbook called Blueprint for Success. Um, and you can find that at the Rebus community. Um, it's about uh, college readiness and success and has been already adopted quite widely. I think it was released last year. And some of the folks who are on the, uh, meeting here today, we're peer reviewers for that. So, great, a great asset, and we're glad to have Dave and Grossmont join us. All right, just wanted to um, mention our staff here. I think um, all of you know the amazing Liz Yada, who uh, keeps uh, keeps us all together, makes sure that people get registered, and handles all those questions that come up. Um, so, couldn't do this without Liz. Um, and of course, there, there I am, and I think I forgot to introduce myself, um, so I, but I think you know I'm Una Daly, the director of CCCOER, and I believe we have Paul Stacy with us um, today, uh, who is the OEC executive director, our parent organization. Paul, are you here with us today? I am, Una. It's nice to be here. Nice to see all the new members and to be part of this meeting. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming. We're, we're really pleased. All right. 
And now um, I think all of many of you, if not all of you, maybe not our new members don't know this amazing person, Quill West, who is the Open Education Project Manager at Pierce College District. And she is now, I think, officially our immediate past president. She's been our president for the last four years and has um, been involved in just really every aspect of CCCOER. And um, she's, I believe she's going to continue as an advisor, but um, she is stepping down from the presidency. And we want to say thank you to her for her four years of outstanding service. And Quill, are you there? I am here and thank you so much for that. That's very sweet. It's hard to let go, but it'll be fun to be an advisor. <laughs> Great. Absolutely. We, we can't let go. <laughs> and I'm going to let you uh, introduce, I'm going to let you do the, the year in review slide if you would like. Okay. Yes, please. So we had a really um, big year last year. Um, you can see the most important, uh, the most exciting news for us is the number of new members we've had in the last year. It's very exciting to have so many people um, joining our community and participating so heavily. Um, I'm not going to read this whole slide to you. I just want you to see how much, um, how busy our email list has been and how much work we've been doing in webinars. Um, I also want to point out those 13 guest blog posts and I'm hopeful that next year we'll see more than that. Anybody in our community is welcome to suggest a blog post and maybe even help write it. So we would encourage all of you to participate at that level because we need a really, really vibrant blog to keep people interested and to keep sharing, communicating with each other in an open way. Okay, Una. <laughs> um, and I am not the only person leaving our executive council, so I want to offer a huge thanks um, and, and um, much appreciation from the community to Kiri Dolly who has been handling our website for, I believe, three years at this point. Kiri has been phenomenal at keeping our website active and up to date and suggesting good ways for people to interact. Um, she was there when we made our new website um, and has been keeping it alive and well. And Cynthia Alexander, from Cerritos College um, was there trying to keep us organized in the beginning, which was always very helpful. She helped um, organize our membership lists. She has helped to evaluate some of the resources that we've used. She's just been a wonderful support person throughout her time serving as our board. So thank you to the people who are leaving our board. We were grateful for your help um, and we hope you get to stay connected to our community in some way. Thanks, Anna. And now I get to introduce the new leadership, <laughs> which is always fun. So I'm just going to um, say how very, very grateful I am to be able to continue to collaborate with Lisa Young and Sue Tashian. Um, I am so excited about where they're, the energy and the leadership they're bringing to um, CCCOER, and I am already blown away by their activities. So... I'm just so excited and I'm gonna turn it over to them to talk about the rest of the year because this is now their meeting. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Quill. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Quill. And um, I just saw in the chat, yes, it is taking two people to replace Quill. Um, so I'm really happy to be here. I'm sorry that my um, I'm in an office where the webcam is not working on the computer, but um, and I'm excited to serve on the CCCOER Executive Council um, as co-president with Lisa, um, who I met at my first open ed conference and learned all about the Maricopa Millions Project. Um, CCCOER offered amazing support to us when we began our first Adopt Open project back in 2015. And they really welcomed us in um, as new members and shared resources training connected us with the community. I don't think any of our projects would have been as successful as they were without um, the support of CCCOER. So uh, my goal is to be able to continue this important work of the community um, by listening to the needs of the members and really giving back and sharing my experiences. So um, 
look forward to working with all of you. Lisa? Hello, everybody. Um, I am thrilled to be here with you, and I'm really excited to be working with Sue and the staff and the Executive Council of CCCOER. I have been a member of the Executive Council for at least the last four years, and I've been engaged with CCCOER for much longer than that. And I just love the work that all of you do and how what a beautiful community we have formed and I'm really excited to be able to work with all of you to move this forward to bring new members on and help them to grow their OER programs and to help all of us continue the great work that we're doing. And so I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, I was just going to say before uh, we went yes. on, I, I wanted to mention that Lisa is from the Maricopa Community College Districts in Arizona. For those of you who might be on the phone, uh, some people take this meeting while they're driving, and, um, and she is the faculty director there at the Center for Teaching and Learning um, at Scottsdale Community College, and Sue Tash Gian is the, um, she is the coordinator of instructional technology and online learning uh, at Northern Essex Community College, and both have led um, big, big OER projects, which we'll hear more about if you're not familiar with those later. Thanks, Una. And I would like to start by um, introducing you all to our Executive Council Vice Presidents. And I have to wear the reading glasses so I can see. Um, so we have Jean Runyon from Front Range Community College. And she is our Vice President of Strategic Operations. We have Michael Mills, who is from Montgomery College, and he's our Vice President of Partnerships, and they're doing a lot around strategic planning for CCCOER and making sure that our strategic plan is in alignment with the OEC's strategic plan, so they're doing really exciting work for us. We have Cindy DeMica, from, who is our Vice President of New Member Services, and she's from Nicolette College in Wisconsin, and she's going to be working with our new members and onboarding them into the CCCOER. And then we have two Vice Presidents of our website. Um, we have Kelsey Smith from West Hills College, and we have Nikki Stubbs from the Technical College System of Georgia, and they'll be working on our website, continuing to bring you the rich resources that we have and possibly making some changes in the future. And I'm going to turn this over to Sue. Sorry about that. I'd like to um, introduce our professional development um, committee and we have Regina Gong, who is the um, OER project manager at Lansing Community College, and Matthew Bloom, um, who's an English faculty at Scottsdale Community College Maricopa um, in Arizona. And they are um, working on the executive council and then the professional development committee um, Philip Ayana from Alamo College District in Texas. We have Tatsa Burm, Inta Rumrung, the coordinator of library services from Roxbury Community College, and Nathan Smith, who is the OER um, faculty and residence and a philosophy professor at Houston Community College. Um, will be working along with them and they will be um, developing the webinars and offering professional development to our members. And the next slide. Um, Lisa, are you handling this, introducing this slide? I am happy to. Um, so we're going to have a number of special projects um, that will go on and we've had four of our CCCOER members uh, volunteer to work on some of these special projects. Um, so we have Brittany Dudick from the Colorado Community College System, Elaine Farrelly Lord from Westchester Community College, Lori Beth Larson from Central Lakes College, and Suzanne Joaquim from Butte College. And they'll be um, developing out their projects um, over the summer and we'll be working on those projects throughout the year and we will definitely be communicating a lot more about the special projects as um, the year progresses. So everybody, we wanted to do an icebreaker with you all and it's really hard to do a virtual icebreaker, especially when you have 
more than 30 people, but we're trying something new. So, and I can, well, we're trying something new. And so you may recall in our March meeting, um, we asked everybody, what are you planning for the summer? What are your OER needs? What can you offer in regard to OER? How could you collaborate with other community college consortium for OER members? And so what we did was we took a look at um, what people were planning, because everybody submitted it through a Google Sheet, and we identified some of the trends that um, came through from the people that participated. And um, we'll be following, doing some follow-up to kind of match make the offers, the needs and the offers um, in just the next couple weeks. But we wanted to do something fun and and everybody, I just went to two graduations this week where, and plus, you know, the graduation at the college. And so it's that time of year. And we thought it might be fun for us to look at the superlatives of yearbooks, like most popular, most efficient um, in regard to those items that trended. And so um, what you're going to be doing, we're not going to turn the slide yet, but we're going to introduce each of those trends. And then we have a number of those superlatives for you to take a look at. And then in the chat window, um, because they're multiple choice, in the chat window, go ahead and put what you think the superlative should be for that OER project. Um, so I'm going to turn it and I'm going to turn it over to Sue and I'm going to monitor the chat and she's going to talk to you about the different um, summer plans that popped up. Next slide. Una. All right. So the first trend that we identified was finding funding sources. So summer is a great time to secure funding for an upcoming OER grant prep program or a project that you're interested. So in the chat, let's type in if you think that finding funding sources would be A, most likely to succeed, most innovative, most impactful, most promising, or most realistic or feasible. And funding sources could come from institutional support, um, publicly funded grants, Department of Labor, um, state funding like New York and Georgia. If you're in New York, you have an easier time. It would probably be most feasible. Um, or external funding from private donors. And so we've got the votes coming in. Um, we'll give it another couple seconds if anybody else wants to pop in their vote into the chat. Mm -hmm. We got a vote for most elusive, which we didn't include, which is yes. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It looks like C is um, the, the, that which is most prevalent, the most impactful. Definitely. All right. And the, the next trend that we saw were the OER review standards. So um, what standards and rubrics will you use to evaluate OER that's being created, um, you know, at your institution? Um, figure out what's important to your institution, adopt one of the existing rubrics, um, you know, to help ensure quality of the material. Is it accessible? Um, has it been peer reviewed? How current is it? So go ahead and type in um, which superlative you think. Looks like we're getting a lot of E's and D's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. A couple of A's I can see. A couple A's. Likely to succeed. Yeah, because that would be um, a project that you could really um, start and finish. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the next one was people were um, would like to establish faculty recognition awards. So these could be annual awards to recognize faculty who promote um, you know, or contribute to utilizing free resources, um, you know, to help lessen the burden on students, use open pedagogy. Um, so it's nice to um, recognize faculty as a way to gain interest from other faculty. So this was um, one of the trends that we saw. And 
and go ahead and start typing. And if you don't know it, both Sue and I are from New England, hence the trophy. <laughs> yes. Looks like we're getting a lot of E's, A's, and C's. So most likely to succeed, most impactful, and most realistic and feasible for those faculty recognition awards. Mm -hmm. And the last trend that we saw were the research and statistics. Um, so the summer like, is a great time also to finalize your data for the year, um, gather information to report about the number of faculty using OER, number of students impacted, student savings, student success, um, meet with your IRB team. So all of this data um, will help you to secure additional funding um, to support the work that you're doing. And Okay. Look like we got a lot of D's and C's. Most promising. Right. <clears throat> Any, so like Lisa said, we're going to be um, reviewing the projects that were submitted and hopefully um, matching people up to work together and collaborate on some of this work. Great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sue and Lisa. That, that was a lot of fun. Um, and um, yeah, a lot of interest from people. So. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, and we'll, we'll summarize that. Um, at least if you send that to us, we'll summarize that when we send out the archive. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. All right, Cindy, would you like to share about new member relations? Um, hi, I'm Cindy Demeka. I'm the manager of Open Instructional uh, Resources at Nicolay College, and I am also the um, VP of new member relations. It is a new position that was just created this year. So we are still working on flushing it out. Um, but some of the main things that we've come up with so far that we want to work on this first year is to um, work with the new members and advocate for the needs of the new members um, with the council as a whole and for the membership as a whole. Um, so I'll be working with new members as they come in to find out what their needs are and relaying those needs in the, and advocating on their behalf. Um, there's a new member mixer held in December and we'll be putting that together. I want to work with and encourage new members to present the work that they're doing within their institutions or within their states or on their own. Um, there's a lot of great work that's being done out there and I want to to um, encourage that work to be shared on a, on a broader level. Um, and there's also a new member toolkit that was released um, back in October that um, it's presented out to all new members, but I really want to make sure members are taking a look at it and seeing if it's meeting their needs and if maybe we need to make a little few tweaks to it, we can do that. Um, but I really want to work with the new members to see um, what they need from us and how we can help them um, succeed in their projects and in their initiatives and in their programs um, moving forward. Because I know CC, uh, COER really helped me when I first came in and knew absolutely nothing. Um, and that was only a few short years ago. And um, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are now. So I want to make sure that all of our new members get to that same place. So. Um, looking forward to doing this and looking forward to working with all the new members and all the existing members. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Cindy. Um, and so um, Cindy's been waiting for a list from us for um, all our new members from the last year. And I think we'll be getting that to you this week, Cindy. Apologies on that. Um, and so she's going to reach out to um, any of you who joined in the last year um, to see um, how we can um, help support you. All right, so uh, 
the annual member results. Um, thanks for responding. We had a little over half of our members respond, which was really exciting. And we're now going to have Nikki Stubbs, our, our, our co-VP of the website, uh, who was uh, who was spearheading the survey, uh, tell us about um, what you told us. So, Nikki. So we, hey, everybody. We want to thank everybody who did respond. Um, we did have 43 responses, so give or take around a 50% return rate um, responses to the survey. And this really helped us uh, set the tone um, and the direction for this upcoming year's interest and in activities. So we're going to highlight the following four results. So what activities were most appreciated? What are your priorities for next year? Um, what collaborations would you welcome? And then how else can we help you achieve your goals? So the top four CCC OER activities were the community email, which I think everybody can agree with. Um, no surprise there. Um, our monthly webinars, which we hope everyone gets to participate in at some time throughout the year. Um, the collaboration opportunities that are available, and the CCC OER website and case studies. We also asked about your priorities for the year, and these were your top four. So the first, uh, the first priority um, that came in at right at 79% was individual faculty or departmental OER adoptions. And the next one that came in at 72.1% was awareness raising on campus. And for me, when we saw these results, I thought, you know, we're all pretty heavily involved in OER. We would think that awareness raising on campus, you know, may kind of fall down the list a little bit. But um, as Quill mentioned, I think that that'll always be um, something that we, you know, at, at the colleges are doing. We're always raising awareness. There's always a faculty member who hasn't heard of OER um, or or isn't knowledgeable of OER. So um, I think having those two at the very at the very top of um, the priorities for 2019-20 for a lot of people. Um, is is very realistic and and I would guess to say that it may stay that way for a while um, collecting data on OER cost savings student outcomes faculty and student perceptions came in at 67% um, and then increasing equity through OER adoption came in at 65% and I think that's great that you know that is finally on the rise um, for looking at OER in regards to how it can solve some of the equity within um, within our course so we also asked you to give us your biggest lessons learned from your OER projects um, and we did receive some great responses from the lessons learned question. Um, so these are just a highlight um, of a few of them. So one was um, the need to branch out into more diverse options with regards to open pedagogy, interactive instructional design modules, um, and then continue to recruit faculty to adopt OER. Um, another one was very interesting. It was to take the time to clarify your own vision of open, or at least your goal at the beginning of the process. And I think this is a great takeaway for colleges who are new or who may be um, initiating new OER projects. And then one person said that all of their OER work has happened from the ground up, so a grassroots effort. Um, and getting involved in OER has been supported but not mandated by administration. Um, the movement at their college was mostly faculty driven, and they think that's why it had been so successful. Um, and I think most people will find um, that faculty you know, support from the administration is a huge player in the um, the success of your OER work, but even more than that, um, you know, having administration support, but it not being mandated or a requirement, um, is always helpful. It's always helpful to know that administration um, is on board with OER and the work that you're doing. And then last but not least, somebody mentioned that not everyone is going to jump on board to do this. Um, it is important, especially early on, to focus on energy um, for those who do want to participate instead of trying to convince those who don't. Um, and I didn't say this, but I feel like this could have come straight from me. Um, and I think many people who have been in the OER realm a little while uh, probably feel this way as well. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to, to 
grab those OER champions um, and help them spread the energy um, rather than kind of drag the others kicking and screaming. Um, and so uh, lastly, we had some excellent takeaways for um, new members um, who are initiating OER efforts uh, at their institutions. And then um, we did have some following suggestions for webinar topics. Um, so our, our webinar topic suggestions from the survey were properly licensing and uh, attributing ancillary materials and mashups, um, topics around quality assurance and rubrics, of course, data collecting and determining cost savings to students, um, a general using OER topic was recommended, specific to integrating OER into the different LMSs that are available, or remixing OER within the LMS, um, how to edit press books or an OpenStax format, and then um, attributing different types of OER within the LMS. And then last but not least, um, someone mentioned a student involvement in OER. So how are your students getting involved in your OER movements at your colleges? So hopefully um, we can address some of these and offer some of these webinars in the coming year. And then lastly, we had a good number of responses uh, of people who are interested in exploring shared costs, um, either monetary or uh, expertise so for, Nikki, Nikki, yep. Mike's gonna address the slide if that's okay with you. Oh, perfect. But, but thank you, I know you, yes. you put that information in. Um, I just, did you wanna summarize before uh, we move on to Mike's slide? Um, no, I just, I do wanna mention, you know, if you, are, um, if you are here with us and you forgot to do the survey or didn't get a chance to do the survey, um, we usually push Um, we do look at the results for this and um, try to plan for the year based on what the needs of our community is. Yeah, thank you very much, Nikki. And that's a good point. We'll put the link to the survey um, in the chat window as well in case people miss that. Um, uh, Liz, maybe you can do that. I, at the moment, I can't switch out of um, presenter mode. But yeah, thank you, Nikki, for that really good summary. Um, and I think, um, you know, particularly I was going to speak to the webinars. And unfortunately, Regina Gong and Matthew Bloom were unable to join us um, this afternoon. Um, at our, uh, they're our professional development um, VPs, co-VPs. And I'm not sure that any of the subcommittee, the new subcommittee, was, is here either. But this was a really good reminder to us, as Nikki mentioned, that um, you know, you continue to have new folks who are coming on board to OER and you need some of the basics. And so we do provide some of that on our website as well, but we will be addressing some of these issues in our webinar so that you can refer um, folks in your, uh, at your college on your campus who, who want to review these or are brand new to these, um, these concepts. So thank you for that feedback. And thank you, Nikki. Uh, Mike, would you like to talk about this particular slide? Sure, thanks, Una. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as you can, you can see from this slide, we, we asked people about their interest in exploring shared costs. And what we're trying to, to look for is how do we leverage the power of CCC OER membership to benefit the member. So over the past year, we've looked at the possibility of different platforms that we may be able to use to share content, for example. So we've had communication and meetings with Rebus. We've talked to Delmar Larson from Libra Text, uh, looking at possible consortial pricing with Pressbooks, all in an opportunity to leverage the power of our membership so that we can all benefit from what we're doing and what we have to contribute as a community of practice. Um, as you know, we, we all know, there's still a lot of siloing in this space. And by looking at these shared platforms, it's an opportunity to reach out across silos and incorporate uh, all the members of CCC OER. So you'll be hearing more about this uh, as we move forward in the upcoming year. Um, but we thought it would be of interest just to, to let you know where we're going uh, and what we're thinking about. And we welcome any suggestions or comments that you have. 
Yes, thank you, Mike. And those of you who said that you're very interested, which it looked like was um, almost a third of the respondents, um, we will reach out directly to you and, and ask you for some more details, um, probably this summer, um, because um, yeah, we, we see this as an area where we could leverage our um, our membership, you know, our larger membership to get some, um, to, to, to add value to our members essentially, or to our membership. Alrighty, um, Kelsey, are you there? I am. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm one of the new VPs, and my one of my tasks is to keep um, up to date the spreadsheet we have going for the Open Educational Resource Conferences or anything related to that. Um, so, if you haven't seen it already, it's under Get Involved, and it's a Google Sheet. So, the past week, I've been trying to keep that updated and then add um, any conferences. Um, for 2020. So um, on that spreadsheet, we have the name of the conference, the link, and then we've also included when the proposals are, are due by. So if you're interested in getting a proposal out there, please look at this spreadsheet and you can kind of see what's coming up. Um, if you ever see a big conference that's missing from there, please let us know and we can get that added. Uh, Thank that's you. it. Thank you, Kelsey. That's great. Yeah, so we do try to keep um, put in the regional conferences too if you let us know about your regional conference or you post it on the email list we'll try and pick that up and, and make sure it's in there as well all right let's see oh i guess i'm talking about this okay <laughs> so the open ed conference is coming up and i know i hope many of you will be able to um, attend that um in um in late october in phoenix um and i I know a number of you anyway are presenting um, as well at that conference. So we'd love to see you. Um, and in addition, we always have some kind of a social get together at Open Ed and um, we're, we're in the planning stages on that. So we may get together for dinner or for drinks um, during that conference, which is a nice way informally. But we're also um, in the process of planning a state leaders meet, meeting the day before Open Ed starts. So that will be uh, the Tuesday, October 29th. Um, and um, we hope to launch um, a state leaders advocacy group. So, um, you know, in the last few years, we've had a lot more um, statewide and system, um, large system organizations join CCCOAR. And so we're seeing a need to uh, grow our community of practice to address those issues. Um, and um, so this is a planning meeting that uh, is, uh, being uh, that is it's a planning meeting being planned um sorry that's a little duplicative but um what we're hoping to do is meet with folks who are interested in those state issues those statewide issues and who participate at that level um, and develop some study groups um, that will continue throughout the year uh, to address you know all the issues that you focus on as a, as, as a statewide uh, representative of OER, uh, funding, um, different policy issues, how to address um, publisher promotions that perhaps um, uh, are um, not collaborative with the use of OER and, and, and looking at how to address that. So the idea is that we would develop, um, you know, a network of, of experts in this, and we already have some of those, so that uh, this advocacy group can either be a great help to a new member who's coming up and needs to find out about lessons learned with statewide OER um, issues and so forth, or when new events occur, uh, when a, a um, new policy, new legislation starts getting introduced across the United States, as I think many of you know, publishers tend to go state by state, um, trying to get bills in, which um, help support various initiatives to um, increase their business, which sometimes is, yeah, is not a good fit for our students. And so having a concerted effort uh, where we know we can talk about what's happening in different states and kind of have a national um, look at how we can um, support all of our statewide OER efforts. And so uh, 
we've already had interest from about 19 of you who work at that state level and um, we'll be reaching out to more folks in the near future as we put this together but for right now um, it's we've we um, believe it will be Tuesday October 29th and it will hopefully be at the Glendale Community College uh, which is very close it's a I think it's about two and a half miles from the hotel venue all right can I answer any questions about that? All right, well, we'll be in touch <laughs> as we know more. All right, now I wanna turn it over to Paul Stacy, uh, our executive director, to talk about some of the exciting work that's being done globally. Thanks, Una. Yeah, I'm so, and I'm always so, thrilled to hear about the great work of CCC OER, and I love the, the dynamic, interactive aspect of the membership. It's really wonderful to see. Um, as some of you may know, we're sort of the parent organization for CCC OER, and as the parent organization, one of our mandates is to support open education globally around the world. And so I thought I'd talk briefly about some of the ways in which we've been doing that. Um, one of them was to attend the um, the big convening that UNESCO organized. My colleague Igor Lesko and I had, had the honor of representing the Open Education Consortia and all of our members at this intergovernmental meeting of experts that was brought together by UNESCO to review the draft Open Educational Resources recommendation, which has been a work in progress for about a year now. Um, we made some significant contributions to the initial writing of that draft last year. And this convening held at UNESCO headquarters was to review that whole document in its entirety uh, with um, representation from all of the UNESCO or as many of the UNESCO member states and some of the civil society observer organizations of which the Open Education Consortium was one. Um, and, and so uh, that process uh, was really uh, kind of fascinating to watch. Actually, I've never sort of been part of uh, a convening at UNESCO before, but there were a large number of member states and observers, and um, a chairperson led everyone through a sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph review of the entire draft recommendation, including sort of the preamble, but also the definition and scope of what open education resources refers to. Um, the aims and objectives of this recommendation and all of the, the areas of action. So the, the draft recommendation has some uh, very strong recommendations around these areas of action, which include capacity building, supportive policy, inclusive and equitable quality open education resources, sustainability models, and international cooperation. And so uh, you have to kind of imagine this, a large room uh, with, uh, with uh, people sitting in front of their little sign that says what country they represent and the recommendation being projected on a big screen in English and French and then uh, the chairperson leading everyone through a review of every section of that to get consensus about what it says. And different countries could make suggestions for additions or revisions, as could those of us who were observers. And so certainly the Open Education Consortia made some significant recommendations, particularly as it pertains to policy and sustainability. Um, this is significant because the, uh, the recommendation was passed and adopted after two days of uh, discussion. And now in November, it will go forward to the, uh, the 40th UNESCO General Conference. And at that event, it will be presented for approval and adoption by all UNESCO member states. And one of the things that makes this significant is that this recommendation is a little bit more binding than the previous OER declaration that UNESCO came out with several years ago. And by binding, I mean that there'll be an expectation that the member states who, assuming that it's approved and adopted in November, member states will be expected to report out against progress on the actions every periodic period of time, which is probably in a three to four year uh, cycle. So this would give us an instrument that we can point to and use to have uh, countries sort of state and initiate things that help make progress towards those areas of action. 
Uh, so that was actually kind of exciting. Um, and, uh, and I think potentially it will have really significant impact. It's a bit unfortunate, of course, that the, the United States is not a member of the United Nations anymore. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that for the many countries that are, this will s serve as a significant instrument. Um, so that's one example. I, I wanted to quickly mention an, a couple of others. So if you go forward one slide, Una. Um, we also uh, host uh, the biggest conference that's focused on open education globally. So this is a little different than the one that happens in Phoenix, uh, in that we're, we're looking at open education in a global context. And so this conference, which will take place in Milano, on the 26th and 28th of November, uh, we'll, we'll highlight uh, open education initiatives from around the world. And um, the theme this year is open education for an open future. And it kind of looks at all kinds of issues related to what the future might look like and some of the challenges that that future entails and how openness can be used as a means to, to enabling a really uh, successful future. And it will address all of the major areas of activity around resources, practices, and communities. And the structure of the formats this year are intended to be much more interactive than simply listening to presentations. Um, and just while I'm on this particular one, to quickly mention a few, a couple of other things, uh, just very briefly, Una, and then I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Um, we also have been supporting something called Open Education for a Better World. Um, which is an initiative that comes out of Slovenia from the UNESCO OER chairs. But that initiative, which many people aren't aware of, is, a, is an online mentoring program uh, for people developing open education resources around the world. It has a convening that's happening at the beginning of July for all the projects and people around the world that have been participating in that. And uh, we, we've been delighted to have uh, one of our staff acting as um, uh, one of the hub coordinators for that whole initiative. And we're also working with uh, Centrum Sofrova, which is in Poland, to host and organize an open policy forum, which will take place in Malta in October. Um, and this will be a, a fellowship-like program involving a six-month period of engagement where people who are positioned to or are in the process of creating open policy can come together and receive mentoring support for writing that policy. And finally, I wanted to mention that uh, on the global level, we also, as many of you probably know, do awards of excellence for open education. And the nomination process for that just closed, actually. And we, we're really pleased to have received over 130 nominations from 27 countries. And so um, the awards that we give out in those, um, in all the categories that are part of that awards uh, system are, are fantastic acknowledgement of the great work that people are doing around the world. And so if you put forward some nominations, thank you. Um, if some of you have been nominated, I wish you well. And uh, we'll be announcing the outcome of that in September. That's it for me, Una. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, and it you know, turns out we have a little extra time. So um, do questions for Paul? Um, We've actually all been keeping right for schedule. <laughs> well, let me squeeze in one more thing. Uh, and that is that I mentioned stuff that we do globally to support open education. Um, but uh, we also uh, do other initiatives regionally, much like CCCOER servicing the community colleges of the USA. Um, and we recently launched a Latin America regional note that's looking to to do something similar to CCC OER, but in the Latin America region. And so uh, we have some really interesting activities happening there with, with open education leaders from across 10 Latin America countries that have come together to help create essentially a new community of practice supporting open education in that part of the world. But let me stop there. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, so it's very exciting. Um, more work happening in Latin America. Um, all right. Well, um, I'll go ahead and introduce the OEC board members, if that's okay. I um, wanted to, um, oh, sure. or do, would you like to do that, Paul? Oh, no, go ahead. That's great. I, I just wanted to say welcome officially to Alexis Clifton, um, who has joined the OEC board um, kind of as the CCC OER representative, although, of course, she represents a little bit larger organization than just... <coughs> 
a 30, uh, I don't know, is it 34 or 37 Alexis in uh, SUNY and um, the rest are 64. <laughs> 64 total. Total, yeah, and 30, about 30 of those are community colleges. Okay, and would you like to say a few words, Alexis, about, um, I know you're brand new, but. <laughs> <laughs> sure, well, I did get to go to the first um, board meeting um, at OER 19 in um, Ireland, Galway, Ireland, which was really exciting to actually meet all the new um, board members and the returning ones. Um, and if you ever need guidance in anything, but especially related to the Open Education Consortium, Paul and James are excellent um, stewards of the community and very welcoming to new members like myself or new board members like myself. Um, so I, I really look forward, like I've, I, I like, I appreciate the opportunity to be the voice of, um, connecting you know the ccc oer community colleges around this the country to the global conversation and um make sure that that all of our interests are represented in that forum and barbara you've been a huge help too and i appreciate everything i've gotten from members past and present and look forward to getting um continuing with that with our next board meeting this in july is that the next one coming up so thanks Great. Thank you, Alexis. And yes, uh, um, thank you for mentioning Barbara Olowski, who is um, a former board member um, of OEC and continues to be a huge CCCOER supporter, in addition to being a co-founder of CCCOER. So, uh, yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that. Absolutely. And I'm so excited with Alexis joining the board. She's going to be absolutely amazing. And, and I, I just want to say how I think we're we're so fortunate to have her on the board. It's really wonderful. And, and to also be so appreciative for James's eight years on a board, which is longer that some people stay at their current jobs. So thank you for all your leadership as president of the board, treasurer of the board, vice president, and all around active board member. Thanks, Barbara. Yes, um, and thank you for introducing James. Um, uh, and I think some of you may not know, but he was actually our first CCCOER president when we joined OEC. <laughs> he went on to the OEC board and many years of service. So James, uh, please uh, say hello. And Hey, everybody. Thanks so much, Una. Thanks, uh, Barbara and, and Alexis, for those kind words. It's, it's, it's been a real treat for myself uh, to have provided service to CCCOER and to OEC as well. Uh, it's been incredibly gratifying to see the growth in membership of CCCOER, whereby uh, community colleges, which once were really unrepresented uh, in the OER world, now comprise the largest membership block in OEC. And for those of you who go to open ed in North America, you, you might not know, but, but six, seven, eight years ago, there really were almost no uh, community college people there. Uh, and today you, you can't turn around without bumping into a lot of community college folks. So it's been incredibly gratifying. And, and of course, I wanna uh, follow on Paul's mention of the Global Open Education Awards, uh, mentioned that uh, both Barbara Olowski and Quill West uh, our former uh, uh, award winners uh, at, at the global level for their leadership as educators in OER, representing, again, all of us in, in the community colleges. And last year, a special treat was that a former student of mine from College of the Canyons, Natalie Miller, was the first uh, our recipient of the Global Student Award. Uh, so that's been, again, just, just gratifying to uh, see the growth in, uh, in community college participation. Um, and so it's been a lot of fun for me. I, I'm not going away. I'm going away from these formal roles, but I'll still be very active in, in the open education community more broadly. So thanks everybody. Thank you, James. And yes, James has agreed to continue to uh, provide an advisory role and um, we're, we're very pleased about that. All right, Liz, I think this is your slide. Okay, thanks Unit. So um, once again, we just want to say thank you to all of our members. Um, I know we, we couldn't say hello to all of you individually, but we appreciate all of you. Um, there are some ways for you to get involved with CCC OER. Um, first one is case studies. Um, some of you met, um, said in your annual survey that you would be interested in 
uh, submitting a case study. So we're currently redoing our template a little bit. So we will be reaching out to you later this summer to um, get you started on your case study. You can also um, suggest a blog post. We have um, an ongoing blog post about equity, diversity, and inclusion. We also have a lot of blog posts about regional conferences. So if you have um, any for us, please let us know. You can also suggest uh, webinar speakers. We always mm -hmm. need uh, lots of speakers um, and we'll be starting our, planning our fall webinar series over the summer. Um, and then as Kelsey mentioned, we have a list of conferences on our website. There are you know, lots of CCC OER members and CCC OER staff that attend different um, conferences all over the, all over the, the world. Um, and we do have meetups at major conferences, especially Open Ed. We had a dine around town at Niagara Falls last year, and the um, and then the year before that, we had a breakfast celebrating 10 years of CCC OER at Open Ed 17 in um, Anaheim, which I got to go to. It was right in my backyard. Um, so you know, we look forward to working with you more in the future. Thanks very much, Liz. Um, that's the end of our formal part of our meeting. And so um, we'd like to open the mic to anyone who'd like to share um, something related to OER or um, something related to the topics at hand. You know, this is Mike. Yeah. I, I just a, a quick comment, and, and we've thanked all of the executive council members, uh, new members, but I want to give a special thanks to you for helping lead this organization and keep us all straight. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's hurting cats, but you do a great job and uh, just a, a public acknowledgement for your work. Oh, thanks, Mike. I'm glad my camera's off. <laughs> You'd see me blushing. <laughs> um, it's um, it's a great job and I really enjoy working with everyone. So thank you. Um, well, let's see it. We are, we've got two minutes left. Would anyone else like to share something that's happening on their campus? around OER or maybe a success that you've had this year that you just kind of like to uh, share with us? Oh, all right, Lori Beth asked, is there a listserv or place to connect before OE Global? <clears throat> uh, this, this is James, I'll, I'll suggest Twitter for, for better or for worse, if you're not on Twitter uh, and you're involved in open education, uh, you, I really encourage, encourage you to get active on Twitter. Uh, that is where the open education community is. So uh, you'll find a lot, of, a lot of great connections there. Yeah, thank you for that. James, do we have the hashtag for OE Global? Yes. I know I should know this. Um, perfect. I yeah, so for example, yesterday, a lot of people, I, I think uh, yesterday or two days ago, the uh, notifications went out of uh, the conference proposals that were accepted. So if you go on Twitter and look for the hashtag OE Global 19, you'll see lots of people uh, ex excited and celebrating the fact that their, their proposals were accepted. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, and um, CCC OER is doing a, um, an action lab. So with about five of our members who wanted to do an action lab on how to build your own OER community. So we're pleased about to do that. Well, and Lori Beth, if you have any questions or um, want to chat before the conference, I'm more than happy to chat with you um, about the conference and um, I'm going to be going. So there's, there's a number of us that will be attending and happy to um, connect with you beforehand. Thanks this is James. I'll say the same, Mary Beth. Absolutely, be happy to happy to connect. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to you both. And um, um, for those who are attending, we'll try and have some kind of an event where the community college folks get together. Um, and um, so, 
stay tuned on that. Um, and um, Lisa or Sue, if you want to share your email addresses, um, if you're comfortable with that, if you share your email addresses, maybe um, in the chat window. So if people do want to contact you about um, those things, that would be, yeah, thank you, Lisa. All right, well, thanks everyone. Uh, great meeting. Um, and we're looking forward to um, talking with you more um, in the fall. We'll be doing a fair amount of work this summer. So uh, we will have a fall quarterly meeting um, about some of the strategic planning that we're doing this summer and the outcomes from that. And um, we'll, be in, we'll be in touch over the summer, but it'll be a little bit lighter because we take a break from our webinars and we won't start those up probably till early September. So thanks again and um, have a wonderful summer. <laughs>